you'll notice in this decision matrix, all we've used so far is normal CDF, because for that entire last example, we were given particular z-scores and asked to find the probabilities or percentile ranks, that kind of thing. But we also need to be able to go backwards with it. What if we are already know the probability or the proportion and we want to find the z-score? For that, we're going to use inverse norm. All right, so let's look at this. We are asked to find negative z.08. Now remember, that's a definition we learned a couple pages ago. That means that the area to the left is 0 0.08. So let me draw this here. I want to have 8% in this tail. So this area right here would be 8%, 0.08. That is the area in the tail. And this line right here hits the z axis at whatever that value is. It's negative z.08. In other words, we're finding the z score for the eighth percentile, right? Because 8% is below that value. All right, now how do we do this? In the calculator, it says to use inverse norm. So that's what we're going to do. Inverse norm, it said something and then it said 0 and 1. All right, so let's go back here. It said left tail area, although I have a little bit more of a comment to make about that, but left tail area. All right, so let me go grab the calculator. And if you're thinking, will StatCrunch be easier? The answer is yes, StatCrunch will be easier. So if you're using StatCrunch, just kind of zip ahead past this and get to the StatCrunch portion. All right, so the area is 0 0.08. The mean is zero, the standard deviation is one. Now, I have a newer calculator here on this app, which actually has another option down below, which is left, center, right. If that is missing for you on your calculator, you have what most students have, which is the regular calculator up until about a year ago. And that's okay, it's just automatically the left. That's why I say in here, left tail area, because it's automatically the left by default. Only the newer calculators have this whole left, center, right feature. So if you have that, you can actually write the word left after it. If you don't have that option, don't worry about it. You don't have to write it. So we would say 0 0.08 is that area and then 0 and 1. So I'm going to leave it as left and paste and press enter. And there we have it. That z-score is at negative 1.1. 405, which makes sense because zero is in the center and it's obviously to the left of the center. It's a little bit past one standard deviation. Now, if you're worried about your graph and all of that, of course, StatCrunch will be way better. <laughs> so let me go grab StatCrunch. Now, how do we make this work? Well, I don't want a between, right? I obviously want a standard. So I'm going to click on standard, right? Zero, one is fine. And then I want the area to be 0 0.08. So you can actually type in the area. Say, I want that area to be 0 0.08. Press enter, and it will find the z-score. It's negative 1.405. Nice, huh? All right. Now, of course, it's calling it an x value because it doesn't know the difference. Um, StatCrunch will always say x. But if this is 0 and this is 1, then that's technically a z. It's like a special type of x. So did you catch that? You just type the area and say, I want it to be less than. Your picture that you're shading should look like this. Right? It's another way you can check yourself. All right, we'll do it again. Let's do another one. So I want the Z that has 10% over to the right. So it's going to be right here, Z.10. And this area over here be just a little bit bigger than it was in the last problem because the last one was 8%. This is going to be 0 0.10 here. So it's a touch larger. If you're interested, you're finding the Z for the 90th percentile, right? Because 90% is to the left. And that'll come in handy for us in just a second. Okay, so I'll, I'll use it this way. Inverse norm. I need the, well, hold on. There's some options here. If you have a new calculator, like I do, well, actually, let me first go with an old calculator because that's what most students are going to have. If you have an old calculator, second distribution, inverse norm, you say, I need the area on the left. 
I need this area over here, which would be 0.90 because they're complements. They have to make one, right? So I would use 0.90 and then close my parentheses off or say left, either one. Again, old calculators are standard. There's no left, center, right option. It just assumes left all the time. That's why I wrote left tail area in the decision matrix. So if you say 0.90 and say left, that'll be fine. You go down and press paste, enter. 1.282. Makes sense. It's to the right of zero, right? Because the center line right here is at zero. All right, if you have a new calculator, you have a different option because you could use inverse norm and say 0.10, but then go down here and say it's the area on the right. So press enter on the right. You kind of arrow over there and press enter and then go down to paste. See, same answer. So if you have a new calculator, you have that option. If you do not have a new calculator, you do not have that option, which most students will not have. Um, it's kind of um, only shows up on some of the newer calculators. So 0 0.1001 right. Now, if you don't have the left center right option, always go with the left tail and just knock off. Don't write this left right business. They both get you the answer, which is 1.282. Now, what about stat crunch? What if you want to avoid all of this mess and just use one thing? Well, stat crunch is your friend then. So if I go to stat crunch, I switch it to a greater than because I know I want it to be in the right. And I just put in the area. It was 0 0.10, enter. And there it is. It tells me that it's 1.282. All right, now I see the next one is going to be a between. I can just see it when I'm looking at the page. So it's the z-score that corresponds to the area given. So I have zero here, I have z right here. Interesting. So I'm looking for this Z, right? This is what I want to know. Hmm. All right, well, if I want to use inverse norm, I take it back. I don't have to do this as a between. I, I, can, I can make this work. What I want is this whole area to the left. I can't put in point um, 0.482. That won't be any good. So I need some area to the left. I know it's going to be 0 and 1. Oh, and then comma left, because I want that area to the left. That's the way most calculators work. All right, so what's the area to the left? Well, you see that's zero right there. So that means that this whole zone over here to the left is 0 0.5. And so what I want to do here is use 0 0.982. Now, where am I getting that from? That is what 0 0.5 plus 0 0.482 is. So I can make a little note. I guess I'll do it this way. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.482 together makes 0 0.982. So if I do that, I'll have it working. So let's see here. Inverse norm, 0 0.982. Sure, but it's the left area, right? Because I've shaded to the left of my Z value that I'm looking for, and then go down to paste. If I want to do right, I'd have to do 0 0.018, right? Because it'd be the complement. So this tells me that it is positive, which I could tell by looking at it. It's over on the right, 2.097. That was a little bit sneaky. What about stat crunch? Well, let's see here. Um, I can put zero in here and then leave that blank, but I think it won't work right. Here, let me try this. Yeah, see, it's not gonna like me. It always does it based on symmetry, which I do not have. So what I can do is the same thing I did before. Click on standard, say less than, and then put that area in as 0.982, enter. And then I'll get that same number that we got before. So it was a little bit of a sneaky problem because it shaded it for us, but it didn't actually shade what we want. What we want is the whole left part portion shaded, the left part shaded. So you have to do this piece right here. This is the important part. That was a sneaky one. All right, now for ones that you're going to use in later portions of the course, 
Letter D. Letter D is your friend. You are going to do this one a lot. So you can star it and highlight it. This one is going to be a frequent customer for you as a student. You're going to do this in chapters 9 and 11. Okay, so now you notice it's a symmetric middle 90%. See that symmetry piece? What they're implying is that you have zero here in the middle. You're going to have one z-score over here on the left, another companion z-score on the right, and they're going to be the same distance away. It's a symmetric middle. So I'm trying to draw them symmetrically. <laughs> and that middle is worth 90%. So this area here is 0 0.90. And symmetry is how you do these problems. Very important that we have the symmetry. All right, so it's symmetric middle. So then how can I find these values? Well, if you have a newer calculator, you have an easier life than if you have an older calculator. And if you have stat crunch, it's even easier than that. So just for once, I'm actually gonna do stat crunch first, just for the heck of it. So it's a between, right? And it was zero and one. And I'm just going to set this to be 0 0.90, enter. Oops, it didn't like that. There we go. There. It didn't like that there was a blank. So I had to put in some number, and then it worked out fine. So 0 0.90, you can see. Negative 1.645, positive 1.645. Done. And this is what your graph looks like. Easy as that. Now, on the calculator, you're going to have a bit more work if that's the way you want to do this. So if you don't have stat crunch or want to use stat crunch, you'll have to do second inverse norm. Now, on the old calculators, which is what I'm going to show you, I need to know the left tail area over here. This area over here is how much? Well, the whole curve makes one. One, take away 0.90. is 0.10 right? It's 10%. So that means that this little guy right here and this little guy right here both have to add up to 10%. So that means that each of these portions is 10% divided by 2, right? Because there's two symmetric tails, which is 0.05. So this tail over here is 0.05 and this tail over here is 0.05. Right now, check yourself. These three numbers 0 0.05, 0 0.90, 0 0.05 should add up to one. And again, you are going to do this problem again. This is not the last time you're going to see this one. So you can type 0 0.05, 0, 1, left, paste, enter. And there you have it negative 1.645. So if you're on the old calculator, you'll do inverse norm. 0 0.05 comma 0 comma 1 and that's the left one and again if you have an old calculator you don't have to write left it's automatically left but if you have a newer calculator you can write that but if you have a newer calculator you have a whole other way to do this so hold tight all right so that would get you this one over here once you know this one is negative 1.645 it's symmetric oh I don't want to circle that it's symmetric and so therefore, the other one that matches it has to be the same number on the other side. So that's why the other one is positive 1.645. Now, if you want to see that, you could do inverse norm. Now, this would be 0 0.95. 0 0.90 plus 0 0.05 together makes 0 0.95. And you could do 0 and 1 and left. And that would be positive 1.645. Here, I'll just go grab it. I'll go in here and make it a 95 and you'll see. There it is. Okay, so that's the old calculator way, right? So negative 1.645, positive 1.645. If you have a newer calculator, you have an easier route. Because if you remember in the distribution menu, you have a center option, see that? So if I go 0 0.90 and then just tell it that's the center, press enter on center, press enter on center, it rhymed. All right, and then go down to paste, and there you have it. There they both are. So on a newer calculator, if you have one, you can type inverse norm 0 0.90, 
zero, one, center. And it will just tell you that it's plus or minus 1.645. Simple as that. But again, I would say the stat crunches way is the easiest way for this problem. Because you tell it zero and one, just don't have these be blank, have them, you know, put, you can put a number in here. So let's say it's negative, heck, I can do zero and one, I don't really care. But then I go over here and I type 0 0.90, enter, and poof, there they are. And it also gives me a graph, so I know what my picture should look like on my page, which is even nicer. But it still gives me the same answers. Plus and minus 1.645, there's two of them for that particular problem.